Uh, what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to time. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you can't throw that. <laughs> all right, guys, it is the day after the election, and as expected, we're still waiting results in a number of key races, but one thing seems sure, that red wave that a lot of Republicans and Democrats expected never made it to shore. So why do you think Republicans didn't do as well as expected? Uh, what do you think, Lindsay, in well, the red I wave outfit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that uh, a lot of people are normal and they don't want people that are election denying like Carrie Lake they don't want people like they're normal her, yeah <laughs> for real that's a good way that are like yeah. Herschel Walker and saying you know having 20 abortions and then also advocating against abortion I think people are actually not residing or aligning with those things and so when you have to decide to vote it's like okay I want all these issues that I want represented but then this person is so ridiculous and in Carrie Lake's case a pathological liar because you're a journalist and you understand right is right and wrong is wrong and you used to be that a I can't go even if I lived in Arizona right now I couldn't go to the poll and pick her like that's embarrassing and so I think when those are your candidates especially when she's being like disrespectful to John McCain who's like this prestigious conservative out of Arizona it's like come on man like so when your barometer has hit low and we already know that Trump's was pretty low you know we, nobody wants to do that anymore I think this is a sign that we've moved on from President Trump thank God Ooh. and maybe hit that his the um, influence that I thought that he had a couple months ago does not hold the same weight. Whoa. Okay. Al, what do you think of the uh, the the red wave that never came? I I think we cannot have this conversation without talking about abortion. And I think that that was a big deal because when we think about abortion, we think about, you know, uh, women and their uh, childbearing years and we're the ones coming into it and they're not going to want to be restricted. And of course, there's that. But there's families. You know, you, you, just one child can take you from working class to working poor. Uh, ch that child that maybe has special needs, I have a child with special needs, uh, but people that have children with severe special needs when they need special wheelchairs and mm -hmm. special, uh, you know, uh, therapists to come in weekly. If you can't swing that because you don't have insurance or you barely have insurance or you're working three jobs that don't really amount to much, Honestly, this is the things that destroys families, that pushes people back down where they fought so many generations to move forward. So I think abortion is a big factor with this. And abortion really kind of boils down in a weird way, and it sounds dirty to say, to finances. Yeah, I hear you. I, I thought it was going to be a Rovember. It did turn out to be, I think, a Rovember, Roe v. Wade. I think young people came out in droves, though, too. I don't right. want to put them out. They decided on the, I think, the marijuana. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think a lot of Republicans were looking at the Supreme Court, like, why did we we push this through before the midterms because without the abortions I, I think we do see that red wave but well, I, think I don't it think was anybody such a wanted to run on that I don't think anybody wanted to run on something that's been in if you're an institutionalist and you believe in our government and you believe it's you know the decided. way that things are decided right. I don't think that anybody wants to run on you can't decide what to do with your body I'm a man telling you that right so that's a weird stance to take and I think if that wasn't on the the menu then you do have the economy and that's the number one issue for people mostly but when you have to choose between like the state of the democracy and then also the economy you have to m decide each time which is why when we looked at a lot of the ballots, if you look at Georgia, for example, we were just talking to our EP executive producer about this. Like you have people that voted for Kemp instead of Stacey Abrams, but then Herschel Walker and um, Warnock. Warnock are in a runoff. Right. It, well, it looks like that right now. Like so, today, you know, yeah. that's what I'm saying. People are not just going down the ballot like I'm Democrat, I'm Republican. Same it's like, in Ohio. do you have morals and do you represent what right. I want to happen right. in the next couple of months and years? Very, very true. All right. So let's talk about some Trump backed candidates like we've been saying. We've been covering them on the show. How did they do? Last night. First up, Pennsylvania, Dr. Oz lost his Senate race to John Fetterman, who won despite By his that recent much. stroke. <laughs> That's a very unflattering a picture of Dr. Oz. <laughs> the fish was this big. What kind of sandwich is he eating? <laughs> oh boy. In Ohio. Cavs. Thank Bug you. Guys. Um, Browns. Okay, enough. Republican J.D. Vance won his Senate race. I was really interested in this race over Democrat Tim Ryan. But in his victory speech, Vance never mentioned Trump, despite getting his endorsement. Very interesting, interesting. Lindsay. Yeah. Granger. And in Georgia, as of our taping, as uh, Lindsey broke up, uh, brought up, excuse me, that race is still too close to call between Republican Herschel Walker and Democrat Raphael Warnock, although Warnock does have a slight lead. Now, it looks like this race could be heading to a runoff in December. So what do you think of these results and how some of these candidates that many considered flawed did in the general election? Can I be 
completely honest, I was shocked that Herschel Walker did so well. Yes. <laughs> he even was going, he's, I mean, yes. I thought he would get very, I mean, this man, I don't think he knows what day it is. I don't think he knows what state he's in. And I don't know if that's, again, I'm not a doctor, but CTE related or whatever. I don't trust this man to know what the time is or the day is. But whether you, whatever you think about his medical diagnosis, Lindsay, you've been following politics a lot longer than I have. I would say that Herschel Walker did probably 15 things that would have eliminated you to even five years ago. Yeah. With the children, the China's blowing their bad air directly over Too much over, trees, over too us. many trees. Trees, I'm a f the fake sheriff's badge. <laughs> and, that, I mean, that was actually pretty That funny. was unreal. <laughs> I forgot about yeah. that. So, I mean, does this then uh, say to you, Lindsay, that it doesn't matter who the candidate is, that we could just have a literally just a brick with the word Republican written on it and we get the same amount of votes? Because I don't think anybody's looking at Herschel Walker like, I want my son to be like him. Right. I mean, we had some ridiculous candidates in the past, like Herman Cain just was screaming 999, if right. y'all remember. But it was, and it was had, a tax plan. I know, but, what, yeah, yeah. I know, but yeah. when you looked at it, we, there was nothing there. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, that's what I'm saying. I think the temperature needs to change completely, and people need to come to the table with real ideas. Um, with Herschel Walker, it's kind of like he, he did have a chance still, and I don't know if that's because people were so... In Georgia, I think it's really interesting. I think we have to pay attention to the fact that Stacey Abrams for, twice now has made major waves in that state. That's wholly red, usually. There's no... Yeah. If ends her butt in a lot of these tickets if it's going to be any blue. And she got millions, if not close to two million votes, both times. And so I think that that's something that we have to pay attention to, that people, it's not that he just won blindly, it's that people are deciding, do I stand where I like to be as a formal conservative that just actually has these three things or these five things that I really like, or do I have to move away from that because we have people, like you said, who are not morally obligated to doing anything specific. And yeah. that, it's just like, no that's plan. too much. And so I think that's the, the conundrum people are in. With J.D. Vance, it's so interesting because he campaigned on being, like, the Trump guy. Yeah. And then he disappeared from that, and his acceptance speech didn't mention him, which is why I just said I think the whole Republican and Party is going to take that step that they probably needed to take in January 2020 or prior to move on and figure out what's next. And I don't know if we can say that J.D. Vance did that. I think that's all Mitch McConnell. I think Mitch McConnell decides which way that the Republican Party goes, and he lets people know, like, we are backing away from Trump. Fox News showing a lot more DeSantis than they are Trump, and I think... They're making they're walking away because Trump is just too polarizing, even for a party that depends on polarization to get elected. Let me tell you something. I hope you agree. Never underestimate the power of Donald Trump. And I hate saying that, but don't. No, but look what happened with Carrie Lake. Though. I know. I just have to tell you guys, CNN is now calling it MSNBC. Warnock and Walker will be going to a runoff. So we know that for sure. And I just want to say, as of Herschel Walker needing to be whatever, remember what the NRA spokesperson said? He could abort baby bald eagles as long as we control the Senate. So we don't know who has control of the Congress, but they want control. We both do. Coming up on DBL, we're continuing our conversation on the election. Stay with us. There's going to be a lot of internet chatter. Mm. That's where the red flag goes up. We are never going really? to agree on this. It's ignorant. And for me, it was just like a damn shame. Tell me I need to do something. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You know why I don't call in sick? Camera hog. Sorry, what'd you say, Jody? Do you want. The great way for you to appear on camera, Jody. Um, so, what we were going to talk about, we've already talked about. What? DeSantis? The whole abortion issue and all that. Oh, I want to talk about DeSantis. Yes. Yes. I, w I mean, if you guys want to. I'm yeah, I do too. DeSanctimonious as Trump. Well, I want to talk about. Okay, so no. uh, you think that don't underestimate what Trump, else? and I hear that there's still a faction of the party like he got 70 plus million votes. Million. Okay. Yeah, in, in the last election. But I do think if you look at Carrie Lake, like she went blind. I'm in line with Trump, and she lost. Right. And she was already famous in Arizona by all in famous Arizona, standards, like conservative major state. news anchor. Yeah. She was, was a news anchor, am I right? You knew her. Fox. But she was also like a Democrat, a Buddhist, gave to Obama. So a lot of people saw her as a complete flip-flopper. Flip -flopper. But I mean, now she was, she's talking about the people are saying she might be on Trump's ticket. I think that's oh. a losing. A woman there is important, yeah. and that's I think important. for image, but I don't know that but she's, she's the woman. I, I told you I like Nikki Haley. I think Nikki Haley and Trump didn't get along. Who? Nikki Haley left Trump's team right. pretty early on, which is why early. people still will communicate with her about leadership in the future because she stepped away before it was like, hello, mm -hmm. yeah. how are you jumping in this? Although she's in lately been pro-Trump, but I do have to say, Lindsay's right on this, the Trump 2024 November 15th announcement 
That has lost an enormous amount of momentum, I would say. It has sort of screeched to a jog or a trot, as right. opposed to a canter or a gallop. I mean, but it shows you, it shows you how powerful so he was that even four years later, he still kind of has the same cachet. It seems like he's definitely gone down a couple notches, but the, I thought he would be, 30, at this point, kind of like a, uh, an afterthought, but he's yeah. still relevant. Yeah, he I just don't know how much. Power, but but I just, relevant. I gave up expectations of Trump and now with the monster's tail. Welcome back. Let's talk about Ron DeSantis. A sentence I never thought I'd say. I'm just kidding. Uh, Trump called him Ron DeSanctimonious. That's the nickname Trump. That gave one him. doesn't. Yeah, he has good nicknames good. usually. But yeah, yeah, that one wasn't bad. great. Well, he easily won re-election last night as Florida governor, and a lot of people are talking about him as the next leader of the Republican Party. Many hoping and expecting he'll run for president in 2024. So is Ron DeSantis now the future of the GOP? What are your thoughts? Before we went to break, I was saying beware. You underestimate. Trump. Trump, but I do agree with Lindsay and Al. His momentum has d d d st stuttered a bit. Mm. And DeSantis made a big, big momentum shift. What do you guys think? I think starting with the way that he handled Hurricane Ian, we all commended him for the way he reached across to Biden, and Biden reached back, and they really helped the people of Florida That's a good point. more imminently. But if you think about his legacy, like people weren't really discussing DeSantis in the way we are now until after the pandemic, because he had this unorthodox approach of like, we're opening things up when it was safe, but not when Democratic governors True. were ready to open, open stuff up. And so he was like, listen, we're getting people back to work. And people of Florida praised him for that, because a lot of business owners, small business owners, were able to get their livelihoods back when he did that. And so he either became a national target or a national hero, depending on where you stood in Florida. And so that, or, or, or in the world, you know, depending on how you felt about the pandemic. He also has a really uh, emotional story. His wife just beat breast cancer. Right. And he shared that with the world. So right. he humanized himself in a way that Trump has not. And he's just an actual smart man. He graduated from Yale and then Harvard Law. He's like a corporate right. guy. So he's we know that he's not dumb. Right. right. And we know that he actually should research. And it's kind of the things that I was saying about Carrie Lake, who is a journalist. Like it frustrated me because she knows better. She's not, I know she's not. Dumb, she's just a traitor. In right. So, I, so that's why I think that if he puts his energy to good use and thinks about the national picture as opposed to what Florida might want, because we know we talk about what Florida and Texas, sometimes they want to do their own thing as a, opposed to the rest of the country. If he thinks about the national stage, he actually has a great shot, I think, of leading this country well. I, However, do you think that he doesn't have the charisma of a Trump? That's that's he's a little. Wah, that's, wah. I, I think and I've, I've had conversations with my friends about this a lot because we're nerds. Uh, but, you know, I talked to them about, you know, whether they think uh, I was wondering if Trump's message is going to resonate without Trump, because what we forget about is Trump already had a built in base because he was in Home Alone 2 and he was on The Apprentice. <laughs> he and was he in another movie WWE recently that I just saw. And all these <laughs> That's things. A good point. He has name recognition. He's a celebrity. There right? have been other candidates that have said the exact same things that he had. But the reason that they resonate and they thought it was so funny is, first of all, Trump was saying things that people wanted him to say, you know, immigration, Obama's the Muslim, all that kind of things. But it was that they knew who was saying it. Mm. You can get anybody from the street to say anything. That's not a big deal. What you need is 25 years, 30 years of pre-built-in fame. And that's what he had. That's why people listen. Uh, DeSantis' wife having breast cancer and DeSantis being able to uh, shoot a nice jump shot or whatever other fun things we know about him. All these candidates have cute little things about him. I don't know if Trump's message resonates with anybody if it is not Trump saying. But we talked about fame and how that sucks, like with Herschel Walker. Like, I don't care that you play football. Can you lead? You know what I mean? That's the and thing. And he was brought to us by Donald Trump, who was famous. Right, but is that fame pendulum, I'm going to say it, ending? Are we moving towards... They're in a runoff, so yeah. clearly not. But we're in a runoff. He didn't win, you know, well. <laughs> Just like that sentence. Oh, my God. That sentence it was not a win well. My jeans are too tight. Coming up on DBL, we are switching gears and having some fun with legendary actress Rita Moreno. You do not want to miss this interview. She is hot, hot, hot at 90. Coming up next. Killing it. Today's Sandals Word of the Day is... Waves. Enter at dailyblastlive.com slash sandals for your chance to win a four-day, three-night escape for two to beautiful Curacao.
Time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. Every year it feels like there's something trying to ruin our holidays. It's either pandemic, supply chain issues, now inflation. And now there's a new reason why your Thanksgiving dinner table might not be as full as it used to be. Recent food shortages could impact your Thanksgiving feast again this year. Let's connect the dots. In 2021, it was hard to find certain size turkeys, especially smaller ones. Well, now, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the country's turkey production is expected to be down for a third straight year, dropping more than 480 million pounds since 2019. What's causing the shortages? First off, bird flu. It's killed nearly six and a half million birds in the last six months alone. Despite farmers' efforts to increase sanitation, the USDA says 2.5% of the U.S. flock has been lost. Inflation, also a big problem for farmers. The cost of corn, soybeans, and even diesel spiked 18%. The steep increase is making turkey farming difficult. If you do find that perfect bird for your table, expect to pay more. Prices up more than 17%. And the shortages expected to last until early 2023. And that is Connecting the Dots. It's called election day, not election week. So how come we don't get some results for days? It's because elections are run state by state, county by county. Some offices might have more staff or counting machines or fewer ballots. They also have different rules. Like if mail-in ballots arrive early, some states count them in advance. Some start the morning of election day and others wait until the polls close. States also have different deadlines for when exactly mail-in ballots are due and when the results have to be finalized. So it's normal. If some results take longer, that's how those states assure every vote is counted. Life can be bright in America. If you can fight in America. Life is all right in America. If you're all white in America. Welcome back to DBL. It was that role that got her an Oscar. She also has won a Grammy, a Tony, and two Emmys. But at the age of 90, she's got more work now than she did in her 20s. Earlier, we had the honor of speaking with the incredibly talented Rita Moreno. Rita, I got to get to this question. I can't even believe I'm saying this. So before you got married, you dated Marlon Brando and wow. Elvis. <laughs> That's the craziest question I ever <laughs> asked. How did those two compare to each other? How do they compare? Yeah. Well, um, uh, one is a country boy, and Marlon was anything but. Marlon was uh, insanely intelligent and and uh, verbal and uh, complicated, and uh, which is not to say that Elvis wasn't just lovely. He was handsome. He was beautiful. His hair, the pearly teeth, all of that. But he was a country boy. And when you've been with Marlon Brando, let me tell you, you don't compare. Yeah. So are, yeah. are you saying? I, mean, I mean, he was no hound dog. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're throwing <laughs> down. Wow. So Elvis was your rebound boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. Yes, he was. Wow. Rita. I get that, ta I get that tattooed on my back. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Rita, Rita, Rita. I was just trying to make Marlon jealous. That's amazing. I think you missed it. I said I was just trying to make Marlon jealous. Well, oh, and you that's know a good that one. Worked. And that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so we we have to get your take on this because we just did a show about aging, and we spoke about how women can lose their sex drive as they age. But you call yourself, and this is your quote, a dirty old lady. <laughs> Ring true and <laughs> we love her. Can I tell you a story? Yes. <laughs> okay. I just did a movie a few months ago with uh, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, Shirley, uh, got it, Sally Field, and myself. And it's called 80 for Brady, which is Tom Brady's first effort outside of football. He's producing and he's in it. Oh, wow. So one day, uh, Jane and I were talking, waiting for a scene to start. And she said to me, Rita, you're 90, right? And I said, yeah. And uh, she said, how do you feel about sex? And I mean, it was the kind of thing that she would ask. And I said, you mean doing it? And she said, yeah. And I said, oh, <laughs> ew, that, wait, that, no, no. And she then responded and saying, you know, 
very quietly said, you know, I feel the same. Okay, about four days later, we're doing a scene in a locker room, which has some astonishing men in it. Uh, Tom Brady, Gronkowski, uh, Julian Edelman, Danny, uh, what? Amendola. Amendola. <laughs> But that's not what happened. What's happened was interesting, and it, it absolutely floored me. And this is God's truth. So I come in the door of this locker room with these guys in it, and to my absolute astonishment, I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, that's... that was worth it. Uh oh. <laughs> I can. I was shocked. And I said, "Come on, you're 90 years old. What is wrong with you?" And I'm telling you, pharaohs, pharaohs. <laughs> Okay, so Rita, we need Fair more enough. of you. You better come yes. in. We're out, we have a heart out, but hey, to our viewers out there, really important. If you want more of Rita, watch Rita in Lifetime Santa's Boot Camp, Santa Boot Camp on November 19th. Also, catch her in My Father's Dragon on Netflix on November 11th. And if that's not enough, she'll be narrating wow. ABC's Beauty and the Beast 30th anniversary special on December 15th. Rita, what a pleasure, what an honor. An all time we appreciate guest. Wow, we, you. Mm. We'll be right back. What a privilege. So what a privilege. Today. Thank you, Hot Stuff. <laughs>this year, sales of electric vehicles have soared. So for many of you, this could be your first winter driving a battery powered car. And if you've ever tried to use your phone when it's cold out, you know, batteries and freezing temperatures don't mix. One of our viewers, Martha asked, do electric vehicles lose range, meaning the distance they can travel on a single battery charge in cold weather? So Martha, let's verify. Our sources are Consumer Reports, AAA, and two academic researchers who specialize in electric vehicles. Earlier this year, Consumer Reports released a study where they ran numerous EVs in different seasons, controlling for all variables but temperature. The study found that at 16 degrees Fahrenheit, the cars on average could only go about three quarters of the distance they could travel at 65 degrees. A similar study by AAA a few years ago showed similar results. The cars back then actually performed even worse in cold weather. So we can verify, yes, electric vehicles lose range in cold weather. So why is that? The biggest reason is simply the need to keep the driver comfortable. Gas powered cars generate heat by burning fuel and that heat can just be pumped into the cabin. But EVs need to generate heat independently, meaning the battery now has two jobs in cold weather, propelling the car and heating the cabin. Electric cars are way more efficient. Most of the energy is being used to move the car and there's not so much excess heat that is being created. A little bit, but not much. So when we need to heat the cabin where we sit, we actually need to use more energy uh, and that lower the range of the car. The good news, the loss of range shouldn't affect most drivers. On longer trips, you will need to recharge more often in cold weather, but for a daily commute, it shouldn't make much of a difference. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. PayPal is one of the most popular online payment methods, but some users threatened to leave the service recently after they claimed the company will find people for spreading misinformation. The allegation prompted the hashtag boycott PayPal. So let's verify. Did PayPal reinstate a $2,500 fine for spreading misinformation? Our sources are the digital archive tool, The Wayback Machine, and PayPal. PayPal doesn't fine users. Its terms of service allow the company to take up to $2,500 from merchant accounts to settle disputes with customers. In early October, PayPal posted a document that added spreading misinformation as a policy violation that would allow customers to win disputes. PayPal quickly removed the document after it went viral and issued a statement saying it never intended to post that policy. However, weeks later, hashtag boycott PayPal went viral again. This time, the post claimed that PayPal reinstated a misinformation fine after the criticism died down. But the proof people are citing? It's actually nothing new. Verify used the internet archive tool The Wayback Machine to confirm PayPal's user agreement has prohibited providing misleading information since at least 2015 and allowed the company to take money in damages from merchant accounts for violating that policy. So, no, 
PayPal did not reinstate a $2,500 fine for spreading misinformation. Other payment companies like Square and its subsidiary Cash App also have similar policies that prohibit misleading or deceptive activity. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. It's never too early to think about holiday gifts, and we've got some really good products from our friends at Morning Save. This is real sweet. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? I'm in the mood to shop. Oh, good, Tori. Hello. Hello. Hi, DBL Nation. We are so excited to show you the deals today, and trust me, they are fabulous, so let's check everything out. So first up, we've got the Adrian Vitadini Canvas Weekender Bag. Yeah, I love that. So this deal includes one duffel bag, and we've got two different styles. We've got Chevron or Rose. So normally, this bag is $280. Oh. But we've got it for $39.99. All right. That's for one bag, and it's saving you 86%. Next, we've got something perfect for your purse. It's the Clarissa Leather Card Holder Wallet. So this deal includes one wallet available in six different colors. We've got red, blue, baby blue, purple, green, and pink. So normally these wallets are $67, Ooh. but we've got it toy for $14.99. Really? So that's saving 78%. Now, our next product is the two-pack Logitech 10W wireless charging stands. Ooh. So this deal includes two charging stands that pump more power than standard 5W chargers. Wow. So normally this is $120, mm. but right now it's only $29.99. Two charging stands. For both. Oh, I know. Wow. So it's saving 75%. And last but not least, we love skincare Tori. Yes, we do. And we've got the L'Oreal Paris Revitalift anti-wrinkle and firming three-piece skincare set. So this deal includes one night moisturizer, one day moisturizer, and one eye cream that are fragrance-free and will not clog your pores. So normally this is $57, mm. but right now it's just $24.99 the entire set. So that's saving 56%. Guys, head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices, or you can even scan the QR code. It's right on your screen, and it'll take you directly to these products on Morning Saves website. Thank you so, so much, Steph. Some good stuff for the holidays. By the way, I'm going home for Thanksgiving. Does anyone Yay. get Thanksgiving presents? Oh, yeah. no. no. Okay. You I bring have... food and have a meal? Oh, I'm flying in, but do I need to bring anything? No. You should make something. No one Sweet. has ever used the word Thanksgiving and presents in the same. It's not a thing. Great. Just cross eating. stitch for your mom. Not Ooh, happening. Yes. DBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place. Why not? <laughs>